If you want to start your game trailer with slow tracking shots of the environments, you might want to rethink that idea. Hi, my name is Derek Liu and this is Video Game Trailer Academy, a series of videos to help you make better game trailers. A lot of game trailers start with a series of shots of a camera slowly moving through a few different environments. With few exceptions, which I'll get to later, I think this is not a great way to start a game trailer. First of all, you know those short trailers that play before the trailer you've decided to watch? And away we go. Those have been proven to increase the likelihood of people staying to watch the full trailer, whether it means to stop scrolling through their social media feed, or to not press skip ad on YouTube. I have a few links down below if you'd like to read more about them. This means slow introductions for game trailers have a much lower chance of retaining the audience's attention. At best, these shots say, look how pretty the game is. I understand the artistic and editorial intent of a slow intro like this. In narrative trailers, it can be a way to slowly build up tension and suspense, but it's a technique which doesn't work as well specifically for game trailers because, unlike with movies, people watching a game trailer need to know how the player interacts with the game, and slow shots of empty environments don't typically satisfy that need. Many game trailers even start with three or more of these shots. I've seen some trailers which start with up to six or more. Take a look at this example from The Incredible Mandy. Here are the shots which open this trailer. Some sort of windmill or weather vane, a platform floating in the air, docks floating on water, a glowing tree with some sort of artificial device, platforms in a cavernous area, flying through structures in a lava-filled area, more structures in an ocean environment, a small person in the environment who might be the player, but it could also be an NPC, and another environment shot. Finally, at 28 seconds, we see a familiar looking game camera behind a character running in the environment. Here's the problem. 27 seconds into the trailer, the game could have been any number of genres which take place in a 3D environment. It could be a puzzle game, a narrative exploration game, an action-adventure game, an RPG, or many other genres played from various different camera perspectives. I could go on, but the point is, 28 seconds is a long time for the audience to be wondering what sort of game they're looking at. Impatient viewers will likely skip ahead to the footage which gives them a clearer picture of the gameplay. This assumes they keep watching at all. My suggestion for slow trailer intros is, for every one to three establishing shots, or maybe one to two, sprinkle in shots which indicate how the player interacts with the game. For example, this trailer could have started with one pretty environment shot, then showed the protagonist running around in the next. It's still a gradual build-up, but with the context of knowing this is a third-person game, the environment shots afterwards gain additional meaning, because we can now imagine trying to navigate them. Mystery can be good in a trailer, but video game players generally have very strong preferences for game genres, and they want to know as soon as possible whether or not a game they're looking at fits their tastes. Pretty environment shots show the art direction and sometimes a bit of story, but personally, I'm probably not going to play a game if it's not a genre I enjoy, even if it has amazing art direction. Time and time again, I read comments from people who say they always skip the beginning of gameplay trailers because so many of them start with either logos they don't recognize and or slow cinematic intros which don't show gameplay. If you're going to start a game trailer with this sort of shot, you should limit it to just one or two before showing gameplay where the player is visibly interacting with something in the game. Another way to make these intros more palatable is by layering the shots with voiceover or story content, but you can still run the risk of alienating or boring the audience. Take a look at this trailer for The Bradwell Conspiracy. There's a bit of story and ideas conveyed by the shots and editing of the computer screen flash frames, but it's not until 34 seconds in that we get a quote which flat out tells the audience the game is a first-person narrative adventure. But even with this, the question still remains, what does the player do to advance the story? After the title card, there's some voiceover and some tense first-person footage of a person running through halls, but nothing else indicating what the player does. Do we pick up objects? Do we press buttons? Or do we just walk from place to place to reveal story like in games such as Dear Esther or Everybody's Gone to the Rapture? Now take a look at this trailer for Sunset, 
This trailer has a lot of slow tracking shots, but there's voiceover of the player character talking about what they're doing, which helps set the scene. When I reach Gabrielle's home, it feels like I've entered a sanctuary a pocket of surreal calm at the center of a city on fire. Even though the first shot after the date is a slow tracking shot, the shot after shows a sticky note with a task which gets crossed out. This simple indicator of something getting done shows player interaction. It says, in this game, you'll do tasks like this. I don't typically expect game trailers to show the most interesting player interaction at the beginning, but this shows it's not just walking from place to place. I can see the story advances through tasks the player does. The rest of the trailer is mostly slow tracking shots, but the quotes from the press do a little bit more to indicate how the game works. I do wish there were some more shots of the player performing tasks, but I think without the one shot of the sticky note, this would be a much weaker trailer. You might be wondering, is there no good way to make a game trailer with a slow introduction? No, of course not. But it has to be done in a way to hold the audience's attention. One good example is this trailer for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Open your eyes. This trailer has a very slow introduction, but it peppers in things which look like they affect gameplay. The second shot shows someone on horseback, which indicates it's not a world of empty environments. The player might even be the person riding. The environments also have some indicators of civilization, whether in the form of something like a hut or dock. In other shots, there are also living creatures which sometimes seem to be startled or reacting to something nearby. There are also things like ruins which indicate either an ancient civilization or something which was destroyed somehow, prompting us to wonder what happened. Granted, this isn't an entirely fair example because this trailer is for a game with a die-hard fanbase, so of course the audience is going to want to watch even the most mundane part of the game when they haven't seen any of it before. I still think this trailer does a good job of slowly bringing us in and showing just enough potential gameplay affecting elements to keep us interested before the shot of Link jumping off the cliff. There is one other situation where game trailers can effectively pull off a lot of slow tracking shots, and that is for live events or streams where the audience can't skip ahead or has reason to be invested, like a Nintendo Direct or a showcase by Xbox or PlayStation or some other venue they're a fan of. The announced teaser for The Last of Us Part 2 is a great example. This trailer was revealed at the PlayStation Experience event, with no logos or indicator of what it was. Its slow intro created curiosity, suspense, and tension, which exploded into applause at the shot of the Fireflies logo, which revealed this was a sequel to The Last of Us. I'm sure even when the trailer played online that fewer people skipped past the intro, but again, this is because The Last of Us already has a wide fan base of players. And also, the production quality of the game is so high that even still shots can hold attention. When making your own trailers, think of it this way. One shot or part of a shot which shows player interaction gives you leeway to show more non-interactive bits without frustrating the audience. You might want your trailer to be cinematic and cool, but first and foremost, it's there to inform the audience. It has to show them enough about the game to at least let them know whether or not they want to find out more. If watching the trailer doesn't give them a decent sense of what the player does in the game, it might not be enough to prompt them to follow the game or do more research. To recap, here are my tips. 1. Limit your intros to 1-2 to two environment shots. 2. Intercut player interactions with your environment shots. And 3. Use environment shots rich in story with details as specific to your game as possible. If done well, your audience won't have to skip ahead, which means they'll watch more of your trailer and hopefully appreciate how it answered their most basic questions. If you want more game trailer making tips like this, I send them out every Sunday via my mailing list, which you can subscribe to at GameTrailerTips.com. Thanks as always to my top Patreon supporters who help me make more videos like this. Links to all the trailers in this video are located down below.